And hello there, YouTube. This is the Florida Rider. In case you're not sure whose channel you're watching. <laughs> it is a chilly Saturday afternoon here in Florida. It's like 64 degrees, and I'm not really sure how that happened, but we'll just blame it on Canada because that's fun. Okay, today is the first installment of the answers to Ask Me Anything. I had a lot of really good questions on it, and I'm just going to go in order. So, the first question was asked by my northern buddy, Livin' Rob. He says, tell us about your most drunken night ever. Tell us! <laughs> well, Rob, there's not a lot to tell about that. I mean, I'm not a huge drinker. A few beers every now and then is fine. As you might have imagined, my drunkest time ever was in college. <laughs> Let's see. I had a roommate named Chris, and Chris and I were going to our friend Jeff's apartment. We had these friends, Jeff and Mike, who lived about a five minute walk from us. And they were having a big party and we went to their party and you know it was just a typical college party with food and lots of people there and dancing and you know just normal type of party and we ran out of beer and it was after the time that alcohol was sold so we switched to vodka and you might know where this is going <laughs> because there were probably about, gosh, about 10 people left by that time, and not a lot of vodka, and not a lot of mixers too. So we started off making screwdrivers, which is vodka and orange juice. And then after we ran out of orange juice, which didn't take very long, we started mixing vodka with everything. And then we started taking vodka uh, shots straight. And then, being that it was college and everyone was trying to outdo each other, it was, you know, well, I can drink this much in a shot, or I can drink that much in a shot. Yeah. Shortly after we started doing the vodka shots, the next thing I remember is waking up the next morning at home in my bed. <laughs> Apparently, well, actually, I don't think it was morning either. It was, like, afternoon. <laughs> Apparently... Vodka's not good for me to drink. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. <laughs> and it really went right to me. And I was told what I did the next day. Like, I was told that I was talking to people, and um, nobody actually knew how incredibly drunk I was until I went to uh, go down the stairs to reach the ground floor to go home. <laughs> Because apparently I took one step and just tumbled down the stairs. <laughs> and my roommate Chris did the arduous task of getting me home. <laughs> Meaning that he had to hold me up and he got me home and into our apartment and tossed me on my bed. And, <laughs> and that was pretty much all she wrote. So. Rob, that's about all I can really tell you because that's about all I really remember. So, Good question though, very good question. Excellent. Let's move on to the next question as we follow the Jolly Trolley. And as you can see, there's not much joy behind the Jolly Trolley, so I'm going to pull over here for a minute because I hate following trucks and larger vehicles I can't see around the front of or I can't see what's coming. So we'll just pull over here. The next one is, called, is from Adventures in Real Life, and he wants to know, what is the worst part of motorcycling? Hmm, the worst part of motorcycling. I could say traffic, but it's not the worst. Hmm. The, 
first part of motorcycling. Now, I want to just go ahead and take the easy way out and say, simple, when I get off my bike, I can't ride. But I'm going to say the expense. Because motorcycling is a fun hobby, but it does get expensive. A lot of the gear nowadays is very expensive, even if you're not motor vlogging. At least decent gear is, or good gear. And then you have the expense of the bike and insurance, registration, etc. Especially if you live where you can't ride all year round. You know, for someone who lives in a place with a limited riding season, I would think that a motorcycle would be more of a luxury than an everyday transportation tool like it is to me. And I know a lot of people in northern places do buy very nice and very elaborate bikes. And if I lived up north and couldn't ride you around, I probably wouldn't do that. I would probably buy this. <laughs> My good old NC700X. Because it's not too expensive, insurance isn't too expensive. Registration's the same on all vehicles in Florida, at least types of vehicles. So that's my answer, Mr. Adventures in Real Life. Okay, moving on to the next one. This is from Chase Jasper Down, and he wants to know why I left Europe. Well, Jasper, there's a time and a place for everything and my time and place was in Europe for 13 years, and then it was time for me to move back. You see, I am the youngest member of my family, as far as my cousins and aunts and uncles and brothers and sisters and all that go, and I am 48 years old. So that tells you that a lot of my family is quite a bit older, and the fact that we go to more funerals than weddings these days is a good indication of why I came back. It's a fact of life that as you get older, people start to die. It just is. And being in Europe, even with the conveniences of modern technology, like FaceTime and Skype and other programs like that, it's not the same as living close enough that if someone needs you, you can be there. And a lot of my family lives down here in uh, southwestern Florida, so that's why I came down here. And because I didn't want to be cold. But I don't regret moving back because I think it was time. Let me just pull over here and check the next one because I don't really feel safe checking it while I'm riding. Okay, the next one is from Second Childhood. It says, your work schedule intrigues me. Without saying where you work, could you talk about what you do for a living? Definitely, Second Childhood, definitely. Okay, Mr. Second Childhood, what I do for a living is I teach. Yep, that's right, I teach. I educate the masses. Or at least I try to. And it's something I've been doing for a very long time now, and I love it. There's no job in the world like teaching. It's very re rewarding, and it's fun. The reason my work schedule seems so odd to you, is a good word, I guess, is because at this time I'm only teaching part-time because I didn't feel like driving all the way into Tampa every day for a good job teaching full-time. It's windy out today. So, in order to survive, I had to take on a second job. And that's the job that you might be thinking about with the hours that intrigue you, because I work 3 o'clock to 11.30. Ooh, look! And at that job, what I do is I... How can I best describe it? 
It's sort of like a training job, which is essentially related to teaching. And what I do is I make sure that the procedures that the company has, first of all, make sense, second of all, are followed, and if number two isn't being done, then I have to go ahead and train people on how to do it properly. I also give seminars for the company and develop new procedures to make everything work more smoothly. I guess that's the best way of putting it. So that might be a little bit of why you think my schedule is a bit strange. And I have to admit it is a bit strange. I do work about 55 to 60 hours a week. And I actually have it all in my calendar, so I know when I'm working, <laughs> and I check it every night before I go to bed. <laughs> and while we're stopped behind the Jolly Trolley, let's check the next one. Ah. This is the, from the Rhino Symposium, a neighbor just a bit north of me in the state called Georgia. And see, this is why there's no joy behind the Jolly Trolley. Now, I did ask Mr. The Rhino Symposium to elaborate on what he meant, and he meant the name the Florida Rider. Well, it's actually quite simple. I live in Florida, and I ride. Next? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> when I started motovlogging, I figured that I wanted to have the word Florida in it, because that would hopefully entice people to watch it because many people are interested in Florida, I think, or many Europeans have visited Florida. Many people in the USA have visited Florida. So I figured that having the word Florida in it might attract some subscribers, and I do believe that it has. And then I had to figure out something to go with Florida, and the only thing I could think of was Ryder. So my first choice was Florida Rider, but that's taken by someone who never uses it. So my next choice was the Florida Rider, so I could still have the same basic identity. And then the Florida Rider was born. And that's how the Florida Rider came to be. Look at all those crazy people. It's like 62 degrees out here at the beach, and they're acting like it's summer. They must all be spring breakers and be saying, I don't care, I came here to go to the beach and we're going to the beach. Darn it all. <laughs> well, good on you then. If that's why you're here and it's cold and you're still going to the beach, more power to you have at it. I will not be at the beach. <laughs> And there you have it, everybody. That's the first installment of Ask Me Anything. I know this has already been way too long, so I'm going to break the rest of it into different installments as well. So stay tuned to the answers to your questions. This is the Florida Writer signing off. Goodbye. <laughs>